Our next guest sat in uh, the newsreader's chair momentarily and we said they might have to break some news, so that's the chair they need. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, the news might be Richarlison to Barcelona for 85 million. <laughs> Yeah. Don't wind him up. <laughs> Sam Avery has joined us. He's an Evertonian. Um, good afternoon, Sam. Good to Hiya. see you. Nice yeah. to see you. Yeah, before we, st- before we talk about your, your new show, um, uh, what do you make of that? We've just been chatting to Matt Scott about it. I mean, just, I mean it's, it's far too late. It's not going to happen. But, I mean, it, in some ways, it's kind of kudos, really, that Barcelona want your main man. Because they're not going to get him. Not now. They're anyway. not going to get him now. They might get him in a, in a couple of years. He's only 22, isn't he? And he's, uh, he's definitely our best player. So... I think there's a feeling amongst Evertonians, which is when we bought him from uh, Watford, mm. everyone said the price tag was too high. And I didn't know much about the play then, but I've seen him and I think we got him at a decent rate, to be honest. And I yeah. think, give him a couple of years, we could get even more money because the transfer market's silly anyway, isn't it? Well, Marco Silva strikers. might be the best thing he ever did for you, mightn't it, really? Probably it with might the, be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unless he goes through the next club that he's at, which it would probably be like League Two or something. Yeah. So that's <laughs> probably not going to be that. Yeah, I think, I think he, may have, he may have run out of Premier League credit. <laughs> Don't you? I think yeah. he, he won't be getting another job in the Premier League, you wouldn't think. So anyway, we're going to chat about your, your uh, show a toddler geddon yeah yeah so tell us a bit tell us a bit about that well i've got twin boys that the i mean they're going to be five in march they're not toddlers anymore but you've got to come up with a show title many many years before you write a show <laughs> yeah, so yeah. no so i've written this show about the toddler phase because i've just i've been sort of writing and, and talking about you know the, the the pedals of parenthood since my kids were born um not moaning about it just talking about the challenges and the different things that we go through in the different phases because the thing about parenthood the second you think you've got it cracked the kid gets a little bit older and all the skills you learn are now useless. Like, yeah, I think it's very it, true. I think it was the, the very day I finally managed to like dismantle the, the double buggy, which was a tough task. They just started walking. They were like, yeah, useless <laughs> And the fact you had two at the same, it's different when, because you can take those skills mm. into the next mine about three years apart, much like Andy's. Mm. So you can take those skills you've learned, or skills, yeah, right, from that into the younger one. But when you've got two of the same age, they're twins. Pointless. I mean, yeah, it's Pointless true. skills. They're, they're useful in that moment and for about eight minutes afterwards and then they're kind of redundant unless we have more kids yeah. but I don't want to have more kids because I've got twins in a family my wife's got twins in a family and I don't know if you've seen that thing going around on Facebook it's a picture with a headline the headline is mother of twins gives birth to quads oh, and the, no. the picture <laughs> unbe- underneath is unbelievable because you've got the happy scene quote unquote happy scene where the twins who are about six are smiling <laughs> the mum uh, all the, the hospital staff are smiling the mum's holding two of the quads she's smiling and the dad's holding the other two quads and his mouth is making a smile but his eyes are saying kill me it's just, <laughs> he looks so miserable <laughs> So you, you were you were a comedian. You were doing stand up before, but when the kids came along, that kind of became a bit of a focus of the sort of stuff you were doing. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Because I've always kind of talked about what what's relevant and current in my life, I suppose. Mm. But I just started a little blog on Facebook, thinking it'll be a good way to not forget material that I might be able to use in my club set. Mm. And with Facebook, you can share stuff and you can tag friends in, and just it, it just became really popular quite quickly, which was really surprising. So it's it meant it, it, I've somehow accidentally built this audience that come and watch me shows, which is fantastic. Yeah. But what was great, I did a tour last year, and it was mainly mainly women who came who, who read the blog, but loads of fellas who came. Like, they didn't know what I was going to do. They thought I was just going to be talking about my feelings for 90 minutes. <laughs> and I had the best compliment from a man. This was in Newcastle. He comes up to me and he, after the show and he goes, you know what, mate? I'd never heard of you. And I thought this was going to be proper rubbish. But you know what? <laughs> it was all right. <laughs> I was like, that's the best compliment you can get from a man. say to us at Cheltenham. It, it's, <laughs> it's, muck, it's muck and bullets, isn't it? It's the proper, it's the it's the, the front line, the coal face of parenting that you you deal with. Definitely. Not the nice it is. It's uh, all the, the bodily byproducts. And yeah. The, I mean, one... Mm. I was reading some stuff you did, and the one that when the kids first when they can they get into your bed because they can't sleep, and you're right, they are the most kids are the most violent sleepers, aren't they? Thrash about, oh, fidgeting, completely. lying sideways, so you're being pushed off the edge. I mean, yeah. you've got two of them doing it. They as just well. come in, I take one back, the other one comes in. It's like slugs in your kitchen. You just keep taking <laughs> them out, keep coming back are in. Fascinated by twins. I mean, they're all all siblings are different, and presumably your two are different to each other, even though they're sort of the are they identical? They're identical, yeah, yeah. but they are very different. Yeah, so. It's fascinating. I'm just I, I'm got the the big kind of brainwashing exercise on to get them to support the same team as me. So my wife's a Liverpool fan. Oh. I'm an Everton fan. So it's you know if you had to choose between the teams now based on nothing <laughs> yeah. but logic, yeah. you're not going to pick Everton, are You're you? not. So I've just I'm whispering in the sleep and I'm buying them all the kits and I'm, I, I had to lie to them. One of them said someone in school said Liverpool are better and I just said no they're not they're not better. <laughs> don't, don't look at the stats. People, people are sick of experts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the twenty point gap. Okay, at how, the how's top. that going? I mean. Do you think that's a losing battle? Or? I've got them about four Everton kits in the space of about 18 months, which is yeah. more than I ever had as a kid. You know, they've had the second, third kits and all mm. that. Um, one of them 
we saw, well, I think it was Martin Skettle that my wife saw in, in near where we live. And uh, she went home and said, I just saw, I saw a, a Liverpool player and one of my lads booed. And I've not taught him that. So he's more bitter than me because I don't think of myself as a bitter blue, but I think he already is. So so maybe it's working, but we'll sit. I'm going to take him to the first match when they're, when they're five because uh, I don't want to put them off. I'm waiting for us to put a good run of results yeah, together. Soon, we've talked about this quite a bit on the show. You, if you take them too soon, they're not interested. Yeah. I think five, six is a good time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Judge, you I took my, my my eldest boy at four, and that was a bit too soon. So he ate his way for all the sweets and the drinks and at ten past three. He said, can we go now? <laughs> <laughs> we lost 2-0 at Newcastle, so maybe I should have said yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think one of the things that Everton are best at at the moment is the hot dogs. So they, mm. they enjoy hot dogs. So, you know, it's not mm. it's not going to be a bad day off for them. No, <laughs> just that's them all that. Does the toffee lady? Lady's still doing the rounds. Does she, she does. Yeah, does she still go dispensing sweets. So I, I think health and safety. You've got to pass them now. You can't lash them into no. the back row, can yeah. you? And also, <laughs> she had a good arm. Yeah. Also, the club being sued by you know for dental problems. Of and course, like that. Well, probably yeah. they're not. But they could be. I yeah, mean, yeah, that's not I mean. news. But yeah, they're not really being uh, <laughs> sued, sued by dental is, is But I think somebody thinking that's a good idea. <laughs> you've, got, you've got to show the. You've got to show the. Are they, is it? Are they both boys or what? two boys? Yeah, yeah, two boys. I mean, you. I suppose you've got to show them pictures of the, of the new ground and yeah, and give them an idea of what they're moving on to. I showed them the nice video <clears> of the new ground, yeah. which you know they were about as interested as uh, <laughs> as, as non Everton fans were. Yeah, clearly. But I was saying, look at this and look. Look at the, you know, look at the extra leg room, all stuff that they can't really appreciate yeah. because they've never been did, to. Goodison. Did they say to you, "I can't believe Ancelotti's come in here"? Yeah, well, I, I told them about Ancelotti, yeah. and I said he's won, he's won more, you know, trophies than than Liverpool's manager, yeah. which statistically is true. Yes. <laughs> but it doesn't really spill over into the team just yet. But <laughs> it's an exciting time as an Everton fan. We, we always have to temper our kind of enthusiasm because mm. we've had too many setbacks and false dawns, even in the last four years. Where I remember when we got. Um, uh, Steve Walsh came in from Leicester, and we were all jumping out, uh, you know, up and down, going. He's we, you know, yeah. just made some terrible signings, and <laughs> ultimately left the club about twelve months later. So, it, I think we'll we'll just have to see what happens, really. Yeah. So we we can catch you on tour, can't we? Um, what what sort of dates? Where can we see you on your? If, on, well, on if you're on my website, thelearnappearance dot com, and yeah. the first date is tonight <clears> in <throat> Finchley in the Arts Depot. Okay. Uh, and then it runs till May. I'm doing a couple of nights at Leicester Square Theatre at the end of February, and uh, all around the country, really, in Scotland and Wales. So yeah, I'll, it's all on my website. The learnerparent.com. The learner parent, yeah, go and check it out. And have you been doing those sort of gigs where they bring the kids along as well? We've spoken to a few comedians on the show. They do these these lunchtime sets where people bring the kids with you. I've done a couple, but I don't like doing them to be honest. Because although my subject matter is about the kids, it's, yeah. it's littered with swearing. Right. So okay. I don't think the kids. Although sometimes they say just swear because the kids are too young to know. But I don't want to be the guy <laughs> no, who you know good. turns the personality yeah. and child. And what did the missus make of it when when this sort of took off? This this kind of uh, the fact that this has become quite a the kind of cornerstone of, of, of your set. She's dead supportive of my wife, but I do try and give her the illusion that being on tour is really hard work and stressful. You know, <laughs> oh, so another three nights in a hotel away from you and the kids after oh, a nightmare love and I'm, I'm already going, Whoa, can't wait to get there. Late checkout, it's gonna be wonderful. The Hawksby and Jacobs Daily Podcast.